It's been buried. And so it's been buried for, and I'll tell you, <laughs> uh, you know this, and you know this, and I'll just say it, there is no shortcuts. <laughs> There's no shortcuts. Oh, example, just in the natural. There's the info commercials that are about to sell millions of dollars of workout equipment for people who want to lose weight after the holidays. They're liars. <laughs> they are liars. That stuff doesn't work. It, because what else, have you ever noticed that the, the bodies on there? I mean, you, you got, you, the men have to turn them, you know, a little bit. You got to watch it. Woo. But, uh, you know, those bodies are 19-year-olds, 18-year-olds. I mean, I never see no 60-year-olds up there, you know, with the short shorts on. It's just, it's just, the, it, and the thing of it is, um, they'll tell you, do this for 20 minutes a day, three times a week, and you will basically look like this. And you're like, no. Oh. <laughs> Do you know 20 minutes a day won't do you nothing? <laughs> it takes, uh, it takes, now here, here's, th this is, this is, you can just Google this, find out. You don't have to be, you know, in physiology. It takes 3,500 depleted or uh, 3,500 less than calories to equal a pound. In other words, you have to eat less or exercise 3,500 calories less than what your intake in is to equal, it'll, it'll take one pound of weight off of you. Uh, you can walk one mile, and here's the deal, one, one mile for every human being, I mean, it, you can't vary from this, you, you can't beat this. It'll either, the more in shape you are, the less calories you burn, because you're more efficient at seeing in, in what you're doing. So. A person that's not in great shape will burn a max of 150 calories a mile, okay? So in three miles, you got 450 calories at three miles. And that's about an hour of walking. I'll give you the other 50, maybe 500. Do you know that you can walk in and in just five minutes totally eat your three miles up? It, those 500 calories, <laughs> and you cannot go 20 minutes a day three days a week and have any result. You might have this result, it'll make you hungrier and you probably will gain 10 pounds in the next year. Cause <laughs> what I'm saying is this, I'm using that natural example is this, there are no shortcuts. To, in the natural, to lose or to get in shape, you, you, have to, you have to work hard and then you have to watch what you eat and you have to burn both ends of the candle. You just, that's how it works. There's no shortcuts. Well, there's no, Short, not only are the infant commercials a liar, but the preachers are liars that tell you, oh, listen, I got this formula. <laughs> Those guys over there, you know, they're talking about fasting and praying and, you know, uh, spending time in prayer and dying to the flesh. L let me tell you this right here. If they, could, if they could see this, this one revelation, they're liars. <laughs> There's no shortcuts. Well, didn't he just give it? It's not works. Absolutely, it's not works, but it's buried. It's buried with um, 2,000 years of religion. It's just absolutely so buried, and the church hasn't seen it in so long that we are, I hope this excites you. You're, you are uh, on the pioneer class. You're a pioneer class. You're part of the foundation movement. There's a movement going on. The movement that's going on is the restoration of the kingdom of God. Now, Pastor Dave prophesied this years ago. He said this, two, there's going to become two, two revivals before the great revival, or one, one revival before the great revival. He said there'll be a doctrinal revival, which I believe we're in that right now. He said the doctrinal revival must precede the miraculous revival. And... Uh, I believe that we're in the doctrinal revival right now. Not everywhere. I mean, in fact, it's getting more f foolishness out there in many, many circles. But where God can, there is a doctrinal revival that is setting up for the, the miraculous revival. I want to read some notes here because we're just kind of getting into the introduction. We're still talking about that favorite subject. We're just going to go right back to that favorite subject of fasting. Because we're right on, 
I believe the, the tipping, the tipping edge. Listen, uh, water doesn't boil until it gets to two, 212. It doesn't freeze until it gets to 32. You can have it at 210 and it's still, it's hot. We're hot, but we're not boiling. And it doesn't boil until it gets, you can, oh, I'm mad, this ain't working. Well, <laughs> we're working towards it. The heat's going up. He's trying us with fire. He's doing a lot of things. I don't know if we're at 180 or 200 yet, but it's, it's not going to, work. it just scientifically won't boil until it gets to 212. And it just scientifically won't freeze until it gets to 32. So we are at a point, and we're growing, and we're getting there, but until we get there, we're not there. But we're getting there. Hallelujah. And positionally, we are there. So it's good for us to claim and talk and speak and say, we are, we are there. We've got to live in it in our hearts before we're working in it in fullness. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> well, pastor, yes, yes. I'll just write in on this one. I, I got something to, to beef on you. you. You know, you folks, but not the people who are watching us because they're with us. So I'll have to find another example. Maybe you've run into these. Some have left <laughs> that believe this way. Uh, you guys are in works. Why don't you just relax, receive what the Word says, relax, and just accept it as finished and walk in that. I mean, why are you always talking about this dying process, uh, all this, this fasting and revival? Pastor, you guys are in works. Now, I've heard that. I mean, I've experienced it one way or the other. Well, let me tell you about your works. If your acceptance of just saying, let's just accept it and walk in it and relax and breathe a breath of fresh air and say, let's not try it. You know, you, you guys are going at it too hard. If that works now, and that's working for you, uh, what we've been describing is this. This is our description of the kingdom of God. The same works that he did will do also. No, nothing less, okay? And I believe that he wants us to get to that point. Now, we might be getting to that point 30, 60, and 100. We might be getting close to that boiling point at, of 212, uh, and maybe we're down the, you know, maybe we're 180 or 200 or whatever, but we're getting there. But if works, uh, if, you're, if a person says we're in works, and they're just relaxing, accepting it, then there's some, uh, uh, not to be mean, or angry, or smart, or anything, there's some litmus test that I always like to think of in that kind of situation to put somebody in, in front of them. One of them's uh, Gary Carpenters. Uh, Gary describes a fellow that he and I both know. Uh, I've never met him. Gary has, but you guys all remember Lynn Perez, okay? Lynn Perez has Tommy. Tommy now is her son for, he's, he may be getting close to 40 years old. Um, Tommy was born with cerebral palsy. He communicates to his mom, but he, he really can't talk well, real well at all. Um, I could go on to describe his incapacities, but he's been in a home. He's, uh, Lynn had him for many, many years, a wonderful mother. She's a wonderful lady, by the way. And then uh, now for a long time, he's been in a facility, and she visits him continually. But... Tommy can't walk, he can't, you know, he can't communicate, and he, he's one of those, uh, when it happens, it'll un be undeniable, okay? Um, uh, Gary's had a litmus test uh, standing. He says this, and he says in a congenial way, I hope I'm congenial with this. He says, if you say uh, your way, and you're getting it done by just accepting it, or you've got another path that will produce better than this, then what he says is, I invite you. I will f fly you on my own money to New York, pay your hotel room. I'm going to uh, lavish this a little bit. He'll 
your eating expenses, anything that you need for that week, if you can go in there and get Tommy out of that bed, if you can do that, just, and, and I'll say this, Gary's money's no good. Take mine. I mean, he's got good money, but I'll, I'll tell you what, take Gary's and I'll pay for you to stay an extra week in New York and enjoy the week if you can do it. I just don't know. Now listen, there are, I, I bet you there are people that are already uh, getting maybe better success in the ratio of the miraculous, but, but I'm not talking about, listen, I'm, and I'm not demeaning uh, a sore back or a toothache or uh, last week's cold or flu, but I'm talking about these undeniable Tommy Perez miracles. If you know, listen, honestly, and I'm not being mean or sarcastic, if you know somebody on the planet, not by hearsay, not by grapevine, but you know for sure that they are uh, getting at, uh, at least a, a 50% ratio on blind eyes, and they, and they didn't pray for one 10 years ago, but I'm talking about they're, they're praying for them consistency, and they're seeing at least a 50% ratio of blind eyes opening. I got a friend, and me and him's going to get on a plane, and I'm paying. I mean, I'm paying for the week. But I don't know anybody that's getting that right now. So you're on the ground floor. There's a breakthrough to be had. Amen. It was happening then. It will happen again now. It has to. Glory to God. <laughs> Somebody sign I say, well, I'll, pay, I'll, I'll take that bet. I'll go and pray for Tommy. But he says in his word, the signs will follow. It may not happen then, but it will follow. Listen, <laughs> the signs following, I believe they do follow. But the signs following has been like, we can't even see it. From the horizon, you, how far, how far should the sign follow? Okay, <laughs> there's always, I, and I'm studying this right now myself, and I don't have it, so I can't talk, totally teach it. But there's always been a lot of uh, differentiation on teaching on miracles or instant healing is in a process, and I do believe in a process of healing because that's how many and most things in my own body have been changed the 30, the 60. I do believe that. I'm not demeaning that. But you can't show me anywhere in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John that anybody that he prayed for that got a healing that it manifest even 24 hours later. The lepers, they were going. They got healed. The man with the... Does anybody know? I'm, I'm thinking out loud right now. I don't know of any. None of it. He, he, he did not have in his ministry anybody, and I'm not demeaning this, thank God if this happened, but he didn't have anybody in his ministry come back three or four months later. You don't find any of those writings and say, you, you prayed for me over Nazareth. I, uh, two weeks later, I got healed. Now, if that happens in our ministry, thank God. But I'm talking about the closure on healing. The closest thing I can think of is they saw the fig tree the next day. And it was dried up 24 hours later. But I bet if they'd have pulled up a lawn chair and sat there and watched, it had dried up in front of them. Because when they got to it, it was already dead. But the man who washed his eyes, any of them, it, the healing took place that day. It was instantaneous. And so what I'm saying is the signs should follow us, but they shouldn't follow us too far behind. We've got a lot of lost puppies out there. They, they've, they're following us, but they've been, nobody, how long, well, I've, they've been following me for years. Well, I'm not, keep your confession up, but listen, we've got to close this gap between the time we pray and the time that they follow us. Amen. Glory to God. We hadn't even got into the message, but I think the introduction's pretty good. Thank you, Jesus. Well, amen. Um, let me begin to, to, to just brag or speak to you what you already know and what you already believe, I, I pray, concerning the Word of God and how important this is for this revival. See, 
for most, ah, maybe that, I don't, what can I say? For many, <laughs> I got to go back to most, most, most churches, there's this elephant in the room. You know what an elephant is? Something big, but nobody wants to talk about it. Everybody knows it's there, but it's a sore subject. Well, the elephant in the room for spirit-filled churches that pride themselves on the Word of God is the, the, the elephant question is, why is it, why, why are you not demeaning again? These are just, we've got to look at this. Listen, you will never get to revival unless you go over to this elephant and look at him. As long as you just say, uh, we know that there's no healings taking place. We still got a signing section. There's, there's a whole lot of people. That we got, you know, if you've got a big church, you usually have a, where they're signing to the deaf. And then you've got several people come in the wheelchairs, and you, get, you buy the lift vans and all that stuff. I'd say you need some lift vans to go pick them up. But when they leave, what we're looking for is that they don't have to be in the lift van. You know, the lift van can take them home, but they're not, you know, you're not wheeling them out. That's what we're after. That sounds bizarre. But the elephant is this. Why is that not happening? Well, it's just easier to have a big Christmas cantata and just, you know, have the orchestra play. And, 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 and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying the first step to revival is just go over there and look that big boy, <laughs> inspect that trunk. You know, you, you, you're, you're 10 tons of what we don't know. Why the church? is so weak. But the only way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. And that's what we're doing. We, we, we've got to do this. I mean, we could talk about and the, some of the ways to escape that, and, and please, my God, I know this for sure, the most important thing is souls and salvations. Yes, but that's a bypass. That's usually a bypass to say, well, the most important things, let's keep the main thing the main thing. Let's get them to heaven. Listen, eternity, get them saved, and getting them healed was just one pill to swallow. It's just one thing. It, there wasn't no separate. Now, for God's, for God's sake, I know it's better for somebody to go to heaven sick than not go at all. I mean, I got that much sense. But the thing about it is, those cliches of let's just have, let's get them saved and let's get them living a productive life. No, no, no. I want to know. I want to know what's under the hood. I want to know why. Now, last week we looked at uh, why this works. Why does fasting work? And we went past on just the commandment of him saying do it. But we looked into Genesis and we saw the, the ground floor. We kind of ratcheted down that microscope and said, this is why just abstaining or discipline is not equal to fasting. He does ask you to abstain some, from things at times. If something's a God to you, he'll, tell you, he'll ask you not to do it. And it may not be, if you can't find it in the Word, and yet your heart is convicted, then that's a personal conviction. Now, don't teach that to everybody across the board because if that's a personal conviction and it's not universal, that's yours, okay? But don't stand up and teach it as doctrine across the board. That might be something, if he wants you to stop that or curtail that, that might be something in your own life that's keeping you out of prayer or, and it may be something that you curtail for a while and then go back to, okay? But uh, where he's taking us, um, it is a place where these answers are coming online. And uh, I'm going to read some of this. I'm just going to read in preface uh, concerning the Word of God because the Word of God is where we're at right now. And oh, by the way, we, we do pray for people and we're seeing results. Hallelujah. The Word precedes miracles or the miraculous. Amen? In the beginning, the miraculous came out of the Word. Okay? He spoke the Word, and then things were created. In Luke 17, Abraham tells the rich man 
that the Old Testament writings of Moses and the prophets are stronger, a stronger witness to his earthly brothers than a miraculous resurrection from the dead. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about when the rich man, sp now this is, uh, this is in the other world, when the rich man spoke to Abraham and this was prior to Christ's resurrection, so that place existed where you had two dimensions, you, or two, you had the lost being tormented and the righteous in a place of paradise, and somehow how that works, I can't, I'm not even going to try to explain that because I don't know, um, there was communication, and the rich man said, would you send, um, he, asked for, he asked for his own personal, they couldn't do that, then he says, would you send Lazarus back to earth, can you get him out of here, resurrect him somehow, send him back to speak to my brothers, and Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets, what he was talking about is, well, Moses and the prophets weren't there, he said, what he's talking about is the writings of the Moses and the prophets. They have the Old Testament. And he said, uh, no, he argued with him, but no, Father Abraham, if you'd send somebody back from the dead and tell them about this place of torment, um, that would have an incredible effect on them. Well, I, I would be thinking, my mind is, if somebody I knew was dead for 20 years come walking in, that'd be... Abraham said this, and you know, he had to say it by the Spirit of God. It's recorded in the Word of God. He said, they have Moses and the prophets. If they will not hear the Word of God, now I'm paraphrasing, if they won't hear the Word of God and respond to the Word of God, neither will they respond to someone who comes from the dead, even if they, a, a response from someone, even if they're resurrected from the dead. What that just tells you is this. Bottom line, miracles are built on the word, and the word has preface. The word has precedence. Abraham was saying this, the writings of Moses, he wasn't even talking about the Old Testament, I mean the, the New Testament writings of Paul. The writings of Moses will have more, has more potential power, even though who knows where those guys, those five guys wound up, has more potential power to convict their lives than a resurrection from the dead. What a testimony to the Word of God. That's an absolute testimony to the Word of God. And I'm saying that in all, in all preface to how much we have to continue to appreciate this revival of the Word. The Word is always, and I'm saying some things that that you may already know, but let's hold this dear to our hearts. The Word is always the framework for miracles and not the other way around. The Word is always the framework for miracles and not the other way around. Miracles and spiritual moves cannot frame the Word or doctrine. In other words, you know how we've been teaching on Sunday mornings and we've been talking about, uh, we've used a couple times, Hebrews chapter 11, it says, by the word, the worlds were framed, and the word worlds is the word generations, and what he's saying there is that the word is what affected those generations. Well, the word is what frames miracles, and all those things that those guys did were miracles, so that's another example. The word is what frames miracles. <sighs> For no other reason that I'm telling you this is that you've had a steady diet and I know you appreciate it. I'm not pounding you with this. I'm saying we've had a steady diet of word, 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 word over these last several years and this year, series after series. But all this is culminating to something. And it's not like we'll ever divorce the word and say, wow, we're transitioning now into miracles. We, goodbye word, goodbye doctrine. No way. That's always part of us. But this is all also part and partisan to stepping over into action, into doing and seeing and all this coming to pass, because the word has to frame, it has to be the framework. As I said, Pastor Dave, would, he prophesied of two revivals, the one would be the first one of the word and doctrine, and then the second of miracles. Sometimes fame comes, listen to this, sometimes fame comes to a particular person or a place, you know, they're having it over there, or he's having it, and I say this with all respect, I do not care who they are, how many miracles they have, or the crowd they are drawing. 
If their doctrine is off, I will not follow them, nor will I promote them. I will not let the excitement of miracles trade for me the soundness of the doctrine of the Word of God. Don't ever do it. Don't ever do it. Because eventually they're going to, if, and I'm not saying the miracles are not, God, God will do things sometimes incredible just because he loves people. But if you ever start down that road, it's destruction. The old argument of which comes first, the chicken or the egg, is no argument at all. There were no embryos in the garden. Everything came into existence as full-grown adults by the word of God spoken. Revival does not appear, and then we, from the experience, form teachings to exemplify what we see is happening. Amen? So in this, we're, I don't care. Uh, I, see, if, if, if somebody's, if somebody's uh, temporarily for a time getting uh, miracles, and they're getting some of them revival kind of miracles that we describe or some of those bigger times, but they're, they're, or let's just say, uh, let me just make this up, because I don't know anybody doing this that's getting those kinds of results, and I don't know the, anybody that's getting those big, big results on a continual basis, although I'm sure there's some beyond us. I hear there's some that's really doing well, and hallelujah. But if in all of the mix, and all if they were getting blind eyes, if they were saying, okay, this is how you do it, you you curse all their curses and you get all their generations broke and then in Jesus name we get them healed if he's having 50% I'm still not taking Homer I'm not taking, I'm not taking you there we're going to stay doing what we do in truth until we get it done hallelujah glory to God we will not trade experience for, our tr for truth. Glory. Um, because of the subtle and blatant disregard for the word of God in these last days by such movements as the radical grace teachings, the word of God has been so neutralized in the hearts of most Christians that it does not hold a place of finality in the lives of most believers. In other words, you can't, the reason why you can't reason with anybody anymore to help them is because they won't acknowledge the word and they don't know the word. If you're going to come to me and correct me, and I could be corrected, but uh, what you've got to tell me is not what you don't like about what I'm doing or what you don't like about what I said. What you've got to do is you've got to show me and you've got to show me by the word of God, not a, not a far out, we've got to have comparative three or four scriptures that form a doctrine, you've got to show me how by the word of God that you see it different. Well, the church at large now, uh, I don't understand, I mean, I don't know because I don't have personal Facebook. I'm not against anybody that does. I have the, the church and I, I just see that, you know, and, and others, other, uh, Harry takes care of that. But I understand nowadays, Everybody's a preacher. Everybody's a preacher. And they don't even know what, they, they don't, it reminds me about what Paul said. He said, they're affirming things they don't, don't even know. They're, they're trying to teach the law, and they don't even, you know, in his day there were, there were teachers of the law, and he said they're, they're teaching the law and affirming things and speaking of things that they, they have no idea. And this generation is that. The word has been stolen from the hearts because of the teaching of the insignificance of it. And by the way, there are men, and we taught it in that series, and we said names. We're going we're, we're gonna to be nice tonight because it's Christmas. We're not going to name names again. But my God, my God, anybody that would tell you that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that the biggest parts of it do not apply to you, Jesus in heaven, Lord God, you... Uh, I don't care what, now if, they got, if, if the guy turned around and got a whole section raised up, 
I ain't doing it. I'm not following. He's going to follow that kind of stuff. If you take out Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, your subject go to hell. I'd rather go to hell. I mean, I'd rather go to heaven sick than to hell well. <laughs> Praise God. You don't think that he didn't mean when he got, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to get in, in, in too many rabbit trails here, but when he's talking about if your right eye, plug it out, if your right hand, cut it off, it's better to do that than, than to be whole and go into hell. That's a message, not to the world, that's a message to Christians. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Thank God for the message on Sunday. Uh, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The, the, uh, the subpar neutralization will lead. Now, I know this by the word of God. I'm, I'm not saying this as a prophet, but I do prophesy. The subpar neutralization, this subpar of taking the word from the believers, will lead to the move of the great, greatest apostasy of the church, in which the Antichrist and the false prophet will lead a massive amount of once blood-bought Christians into a turning away that will lead them into eternal hell. Yes, Jesus, my God. The loss of the five virgins... And the great falling away of the church would not be possible for anyone who knew the word of God. But when the word is stolen or fragmented, then there's no foundation by which these poor and bless their heart miserable Christians can judge what they are hearing or seeing. When you take it out and, and you teach its insignificance and Lord God, thank God Jim's coming again. He's got one of the best messages on uh, what Bible translation are you, are you reading? Jesus. I mean, that man's broke it down. Do you know there's, some of the, there's, there's several of them? I'm calling them evil. I'm calling them evil. Because they take it away. They take some things out of there and fragment it in such, in such ways that they have stolen the truth. They've stolen the truth. You better watch what translation you're reading out of. Hallelujah. That's another one to chew on. Um, Matthew 24, 24 says, and you don't have to turn there, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible they should deceive the very elect. Well, I'm going to tell you, it is going to be possible for some. It is going to be, it, it, it is going to be possible because they have no word in them. And if you don't have any word in you, you can love, you can, you can be born again. You may not have an intimate, he, he, some he's going to say, depart from me, I never had an intimate relationship with you. Um, but if you, here's where you solidify an immunity, an immunization against deception. Stay in this word, read the word, pray in the spirit. Those th praise God for the things that God has enabled us to teach here. The possibility does exist for many Christians because of the neutralization of no word in them. The revival we speak of must be framed by the word of God. The revival is no less... These are simple things, but very powerful. No less than the fullness of the gospel of the kingdom of God. That's revival, the gospel of the kingdom. Anything less cannot become a standard for the gospel of the kingdom. We thank God for the success that comes in the miraculous to anyone in the way of healing or miraculous. We rejoice with them with all sincerity, but we cannot stop short of the fullness. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Um, just checking some of these notes before we move on. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Turn with me. Well, uh, turn with me to Matthew 17. We've got a, I don't know how far we'll get into that. 
Um, but we will, because I want to I want to bless you with the thought of fasting before the holidays. No, not before the holidays. We're teaching this before the holidays, not that you'll be fasting before the holidays. That's, I need to clarify that. Right, Steve? Amen. Hallelujah. Now, last week, I'll go over this just a little bit with you. Um, one of the things that we talked about, and I, and, and I, I want to clarify this. When Jesus said to the woman with the issue of blood, thy faith has made thee gold, go thy way, thy faith has made thee whole, I'm, uh, for God's sake, I'm not contesting that what Jesus was saying was not true. Because we talked about that last week. That's an absolute truth. Her faith made her whole. But we went on a step further to say this. That woman, along with everybody else, prior to the cross and resurrection, they were not born again. So we're, so we're, we're trying to answer this question. Because I've preached it before in days gone by. Well, you're, you're, you're praying for somebody. You go pray for somebody and you say, look, I mean, I might not preach this to them, but this is your thought pattern. Or maybe I'd preach it from the pulpit. If you just have that faith as reaching out like the woman with the issue of blood. And you can just touch him, believe, and you'll receive Okay, this is what we've got to re reconcile. That woman was not born again. We know that just having the born again spirit already certifies this. The law of the spirit of life in you emanates health and healing. So you got that going for you. Then we preach like crazy like I've been. Read the word, read the word, read the word, read the word. Build you up, build you up, build you up. It'll, 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 the more you hear, the more you see, the more the faith comes. That's the truth. Did she have any word in her? Zippo. Zippo. She had no access to the word of God. The New Testament wasn't written, and the Old Testament, as far as I know, could not have been in her home. She could have heard it maybe in the synagogue if she was allowed to go. Um, and if they knew, here's the deal. I'm, I'm, uh, I know this. Uh, by the Old Testament, if they knew that she was hemorrhaging, she wasn't, she wasn't in there. She wasn't allowed in there. I mean, she had to stay away so she probably wasn't even, all she knew, she got a report that this man Jesus was walking from city to city healing people. And she consented in her faith to believe, I believe he can do this because I've heard that he's doing it. She, uh, obviously, she didn't, if she wasn't born again, she didn't have the Holy Spirit. She wasn't praying in tongues. She couldn't be building herself up on her most holy faith. So what about the people that we pray for? And we know, I can tell you, if they've done any word if they've got any word in them at all, if they're praying in tongues and they're born again, they've got more faith than this woman with the issue of blood. They, they, it, I know, not, not because I know them personally, it's just truth impossible. It's just knowing the truth, knowing what the word does for you. Well, then what's the problem here, Pastor? Well, the problem is the source. The, the source by which healing is supposed to be coming from us and the power source by which we, we see he was he was the battery on this earth now if you grab hold of you you grab hold of uh uh 220 volts not grounded something's gonna happen power is gonna flow it's coming that's a lot different than touching a 9-volt battery. That's where we, a lot of us are, 9-volt. Well, no, we used to be. I see people that do, uh, is, that, is that 9 volts what we, runs these things and stuff? I see people, now Marty tests them with a little tester. I've seen people stick it to their tongue. I don't do that kind of stuff. I don't like any kind of vibration or anything like that. But his power could say, thy faith has made you whole, but when you tie into 220 or 1,000 volts, that 1,000 volts makes up for a whole lot of your insufficiencies. Does that make sense? We're going to come to the place, and we're coming to that place where we'll say, do you believe? 
They ain't got no word in them. And they might not even be saying, yeah, I, 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 I believe. Be it unto you, according to your... <laughs> where did that power come from? It, it didn't come from the place where it, we think of as that ongoing faith. It came, the power, it came from the power source. Us. On this earth. Glory be to God. That makes a lot, lot of sense. In its word. Praise the Lord. Um, so we talked a lot, and I'm just going to review just, just for a second. In fact, we kind of already have reviewed talking about the, the onus being on the power source, which is us. Um, and knowing that all things work. Last week we talked uh, again about, we went out of Matthew 9. Listen, I'm doing this fasting, so we won't even have to worry about it after the holidays. You just take off. Listen, this is one of your best friends. Okay, I brought him, I brought him or her again tonight. Don't leave it a chance. Uh, you don't have to do this. I'm just using it as an example. But if you say, you know what, I'm going to consider this. You know, let me get through the holidays. I'm going to. When you're driving, or when you're at home, or why, when you're privately, start thinking about what, and the Lord will come, and you, you start meditating and asking Him. Is it one day? A week? Is it, you know, uh, uh, Dave used to talk about serious fasting will do you just as much good over a period of time as a long, a long one will. In fact, sometimes series just getting in a steady rhythm and doing something on a continual basis is really, is really more. Um, we talked about, so I'll, 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 this is a calendar. What I'm, what I'm saying is don't leave it a chance. Don't leave it to the future begin to make application to something now and say, okay, I'm boiling it down. If you don't, the chances are it's about, t it's, it's 10 times the amount of chance, I, I, I would think, that you won't or things will, you know. Now, you have to be versatile. You have to be uh, uh, you, you, flexible. Some things will come up. But nevertheless, if you have it, and they, even if you look at the year and say, Okay, every quarter I'm going to do this. That that's a good thing, and it all it all really boils down to now. The last week when we got into ratcheting that that telescope uh, or microscope down, um, we were looking at the whys, and the reason why it worked was what we saw out of the Word of God in Genesis was that the first sin occurred by the consumption of food. And when food came in, I don't know what that fruit was. I don't know what it looked like. We've talked about it being, people said it's an apple. We don't know, have any idea what it was. But when food came in, the food itself didn't, it was the disobedience. And it was, no, well, it was. It was the knowledge of good and evil. So that was part and partisan to it. But uh, when the food came in, hit the stomach, the couple died spiritually. They didn't die physically. They died uh, their spirit died, and just the reverse. God breathed the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Life came into his soul, his mind, his will, his emotions. He became a living soul. And uh, we said last week, and you have to know this by the word of God, it's just there. Um, when he came, Satan came, the temptation was 100% on the outside. It was the, it was the principle of free will and choice that caused her and him, Adam, to, to choose. They, they analytically thought and thought through it and chose the difference, the little, the, the, the difference between, it's not little, but the difference between them then, they died, and their spirits died, and it empowered their flesh. The reverse, they, what they did was the reverse of Genesis 1, uh, or when, when God created man, Breathe the breath of life, which was the, the life of God, which became man's human spirit, and he became a living soul. Life, his whole life, mind, will, emotions, everything came online. When he, the reverse, when he died, when his spirit died, it didn't cease to exist. It died in the sense of it had no more life in it. Then there's no more life also in the flesh or in the soul. The flesh is the body and the now what we call the unrenewed mind, the combination of the two. The flesh can be this. This has, this will talk to you. Go without food long enough, it'll just start talking to you. It has a voice. And uh, 
so when the when food came in, the spirit died, the body or flesh was empowered. It came to life. Now the amazing part is fasting doesn't save you. I mean, you don't fast and get born again, but once you're born again, it goes back to the Roman Romans 8, 1 and 2 law, the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death. It is exacted or it's acted upon. The foundation of fasting is it goes off of that law, and when it goes off of that law, it takes you all the way back to the reversal of Genesis 1 and 2 and 3 and whatever, and it does this. What, what, na- what once killed mankind, now when you refrain through fasting, it exercises the law that emanates and destroys the empowered flesh. So that's why with strength, you know, I'm not going to watch football, I'm not going to do Facebook for a week, or I'm not going to golf, that's mine, I'm not going to golf, you know, uh, you know, since, uh, don't ask me not to hunt for uh, uh, several months or whatever, but <laughs> um, restraint from things or discipline from things, like I said, he may ask you to do that, but that's not fasting, it's just not by the word of God. So we understood why those things work. But that was all applicable. That was all applicable to um, destroying the appetites of the flesh. And that's part and partisan to our walk into revival. Now, Matthew 17, and I'm listening. You guys know I'm pausing here. I'm listening because we could, yeah, this is, you could get into this. It's really good. I think we'll just kind of advertise this. You guys know it, but this is, uh, we'll, we'll end up here. We'll start, since I've done, gone through all this, we'll start up as much as we can on this next week, and that'll be a nice Christmas present to give you. We'll go into the other side of fasting is not just um, that we, we've, we've talked about the destroying of the flesh and the appetites of the flesh. This one is the subtlety of unbelief. And that has to be part of our tipping point. That has to be part of the elephant. That has to be part of why. You know, this, this is the answers. These are the answers. This, is, this takes us to 212. This takes us to boiling point. This takes us to, to the point where we, we tip the scale. Because um, the word is teaching us, and here's the deal. Where we're coming to, now, there's, none of us are perfect in the sense like, Paul said he was always striving to go, to, to, to go forward. But the people that are going to cause revival, and I can just tell you, straight up, the people that are really going to be the catalyst, the, the kindling, the, the ones where, I mean, nobody goes along and says, you revi- you're the one, because I, I, I wouldn't even know necessarily, because I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're praying, seeking God, fasting or not. I don't know, really. Sometimes you might share, and I say, praise God, I appreciate that. But the ones that are, have any authority to cause revival. Now, he's given us the whole church authority, but most of the church is not walking in that. But the ones that cause revival, say it, Bron, are these. They're not, they're not fighting uh, whether or not they're going to fornicate or not. <laughs> they're not fighting that battle. I mean, there are Christians that are fighting that battle, but they're not. Don't worry about them causing revival. They're, don't be scared about them causing. They, 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 they're nowhere close to being call, causing revival. Uh, the ones that are, you know, still, still wanting to argue about, uh, is it wrong to drink? Because I like to have a few drinks on Saturday night. You know what? Uh, I'm gonna love you. But you, 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 you take the onus off of you, I can relax. I don't have to put no pressure on you because you, you ain't one of the ones that's causing revival. If that's, still a, a, if, if that's still an argument for you. I like to have a few drinks. Can I, uh, I like to do this. I like to, building towards revival, we should be at a place and if we're not, in this next year, he's gonna, he's gonna, the fire's going to come, if you allow it, that a lot of that stuff, well, I'm not saying perfect, I'm not saying perfect, perfect, in the sense that we're still going to have to, but the first application of this message of the wineskin, those major things, like Paul said, don't let fornication be once named among you. I mean, why, why in God's name, would, I mean, 
And, and to much of the church, they're like, oh, that's, you know, well, God will forgive us. Well, sure, sure, but if you truly repent. But if you're figuring on doing it next weekend, you ain't repented. Don't judge me. Don't judge me. Homer's in the back. Uh, but if your wine skin is purged past all those places, now we get into Matthew 17 where the subtleties of unbelief, where the disciples, now I'm exhorting this, and we're closing with it. I'm not reading it, but exhorting it. The disciples, you've heard this. How many times you heard Pastor Dave exhort it or teach it? But again, it's the tipping point. It's, the, it's part of the 212 boiling point. It's part of getting us there. It's that part of like, I'm not walking around like I'm Mr. Perfect, but my God, my God, we should be way past some of that other stuff. I mean, that shouldn't even be like a, a real argument. Now we're working on the same kinds of arg uh, things like the, the disciples were like, we've been doing this. Why is it not working? And he says, okay, this kind, not this kind of devil, but this kind of subtlety of unbelief. See, when I pray for somebody, I do my best not to, to get, I I'm, try to be focused, very focused. I want it to happen then. I want it to follow me right then. But if it's not, I can't, I'm not suited now to, uh, it doesn't, it doesn't pacify me to go away and figure out what that person's doing wrong in their life that I couldn't. See, that argument don't go with babies and kids and all those kinds of things. And if my grandkids call me and say, uh, Papa, you need to pray, or, you know, Mama's calling, Papa, you need to pray, so-and-so's got a sore throat or sick, and I pray for them, it ain't, the, it ain't, it ain't their babies. It ain't the baby's fault if they don't get... And, 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 and then I could, it, it ain't even, at this point, I can supersede mama and daddies because they are asking me to pray. Well, if that doesn't happen, uh, there's only one thing. There's a subtlety in my flesh, in, in Bronk Flint, that still doesn't totally believe that when I pray, it's going to happen. What do I do? Sit and wait? See, the, the sovereign message says when God wants to send revival, he's going to, so we're just like sitting, you know, twiddling our thumbs like one day, I don't know when. This takes it to him. This takes it to the house. This takes it and says, wait a minute. If it's not happening, he said it would, and if I do have a problem, well, how can I fix that? Fasting will destroy this kind will come out. You, you might not even feel no different. You don't even know the day it came out. But when you pray, same prayer, didn't feel, see, anointing's not felt. It can be felt, but it doesn't mean that you have the anointing if you feel it or don't feel it. You just pray. And it, when it happens, it's going to start happening at an astronomical amount. Praise God. Amen. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for our here and our, th our family out there. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. This is, the, this is revival. We're asking you to bless everyone here. Lord, if anyone here has any blessings to bring to the church tonight, we just bless it and we thank you for it. And for all those that are givers out there, thank you. Lord, let this word sink deep in our hearts. God bless the families of the family prayer center and our extended family during this holiday season. I pray that all their needs are met according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And this is one of the most wonderful, beautiful, family-filled Christmases ever in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you. We love you. Amen.